Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jaylee. Um, we are not on the homestead. We are at my parents' new house and we are about to come outside and explore. It is a beautiful day. It is supposed to be 70. It feels like it may already be about 70. And I just love coming out here because I can talk to you freely at whatever volume I wanna to talk to you. And I don't have to worry about neighbors. I don't have to listen to dogs barking. It is just so quiet. <sighs> it makes me very, very happy. So we are going to walk around and I'm gonna be here for the next few hours. Um, we're gonna walk around. We're going to look and uh, see the property during the springtime, see what's coming to life. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an update on some things because I haven't been uploading regularly and um, I think I owe you guys a bit of an explanation. So over here, we're on the patio and they've got this beautiful swing, or I guess back deck, um, and it's a wooden back deck. Look at how nice it is. Very nice. They got the table out here. It's a very nice back deck. What a blessing. And so there are these very pretty little white flowers growing in here. I told my mom she definitely needs to plant herbs in here. And there's one on the other side of the swing as well. And um, I 100% think that these need to be herb gardens because, um, or at least we're very short. I'm five foot even. My mom's even shorter than I am. And um, I, we won't be able to reach all the way back there. Um, so probably maybe some flowers or something lovely back there. But the front of these beds need to be herbs for sure because the kitchen is right. That's what those double doors are. They lead into the um, eat-in kitchen or I guess the dining room off of the kitchen. So to be able to just come right out here and harvest herbs while cooking, amazing. So I told her that I definitely think that that should be um, what she does there. We're gonna come down here. I see wasps everywhere, which I hate. I hate wasps. Love bees, hate wasps. And I do have the keys. I'm here by myself. My parents are not here. They gave me the keys to get into um, the small barn as well as the big barn, but we'll see. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go in there. And my dad has already been mowing. You go, dad. Oh no, we're definitely gonna go into the big barn because I have to show you guys something. But look at, you can tell that my dad's been mowing. There's grass and I love that for him. He has been just so happy. My dad and I are very, very, very similar in our love of the land and in our desire to be outside and our desire to be working the land. And so now that it's springtime, he has been thoroughly enjoying coming out here um, and getting to uh, see the property and make some improvements. He's already torn um, some bushes out and some plants out from around the house. And um, as you can see, he's already mowed. He bought himself a chainsaw. He bought himself a wood splitter. And I'm just so, so happy for him. So we're gonna come around over here. Here is what we're calling the smoke shack. This little shed here is where my dad is keeping his grill and his smoker. He's already smoked some meat since moving here. And he's just been um, enjoying having that shed. All right, you guys, are you ready to see something really exciting? Well, first things first, we've got the wood splitter right here, but more importantly, my dad got a tractor. I'm so happy for him. Very much a used tractor. I think it's a 1950s Ford, I'm pretty sure. But the incredible thing about it, one owner, you guys. This tractor has been in um, a family for very decades and decades, very long time, and it was a golf course tractor. Um, that's what it has spent its life doing. and. Um, I can't, he did tell me the story and I can't remember now the full story, but um, basically they, they sold it to my dad and um, he said that when he went to pick it up, they were very emotional about it. They were definitely attached. This was Papa's tractor, you know, that kind of situation. 
and um, now it's ours. And I did um, get to sit in it the other day. You know what? Let's get up here. Personally, I find this kind of stuff to be terrifying. <laughs> it's just it's just no joke, you know. I definitely take um, safety very seriously, and um, these are not toys. This is a very serious piece of equipment. Um, I mean, look at this. Is a, this, is, this is a big, yeah, big, big boy, big tractor. So yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that little update. I'm so man. I'm just, I love my dad and I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy that he has some land. I'm happy that he's getting all of these toys and that he's getting to finally live his dream because he's such a hardworking guy. Um, my parents had all three of us kids before they were 23, 24, somewhere in there. Um, and they've worked their butt offs to provide for us, to give us a good life. And I'm just so happy for them that they are starting to reap some of what they have sown. Um, yeah. So there's that. All right, let's keep walking and see um, what else we can see out here. I definitely want to take you guys over to the willow because I'm so excited about it. And then I'm going to take you down to the creek, but we're going to go down to the creek a different way. So we have determined that these trees are pears. Um, we did find some on the ground and they were dried up and they were definitely pears. So look at all those little buds. Oh, I'm so very excited to have fresh fruit on this property. That's gonna be amazing. To be fair, we're not exactly sure that they're all the same. I would reckon that this one and this one are the same. They look the same. And I just showed you those buds. Let's look here. These look very similar. So I would think that these two trees are the same. But then over here is where this little mini orchard has been put in. And there are six trees right here. And I don't know what any of them are, but they are definitely, see this to me still looks like the other, the other two. This looks very similar to me. Do fruiting trees just usually look very similar? And then there's this little guy. This looks dead. I don't see anything. Maybe? This looks pretty dead to me. We'll find out. This one. It's, it's coming. I don't think it's going to produce anything this year. It, it looks pretty new to me, but we'll find out. This guy is leaning. This is the Leaning Tower of Pisa over here. I told Dad we need to brace this one. It's leaning pretty bad. We had some pretty severe winds, and so I think that's why it's leaning. But it's got some buds. It looks like it's going to put on something. And then there's this one over here. It also doesn't look, it looks pretty new as well. It doesn't look like it's going to put on any fruit, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I see a few, here I see a few buds. We'll see, we'll see what it does. Now the willow is right over here. Do you guys see it? This guy? <gasps> look at how beautiful. <gasps> I can't wait to see it this summer fully leafed out or whatever. Oh man. And over the years, watching it grow, beautiful. All right, now for the fun part, but also the scary part. We're going to make our way down to the creek. Um, I say scary because this is my first time being here alone. And I have a very healthy respect of animals. Um, dogs, coyotes. Um, my dad swears he saw bobcat tracks. I'm not going to say that he didn't. He very well could have. Um, so it just, animals freak me out. Um, yeah, we're going to make our way. Oh, wow. Let me see if I can show you guys. Many an obstacle along the way, though. <laughs> so here's the thing. I brought my garden snips and I'm gonna snip stuff down along the way because this property is full full of nasty thorny things and it just hasn't been maintained back here anyway um, maybe ever I don't even know the last time so as I go along and as things snag on me and pull me I'm gonna clip it down and we're gonna make our way to the creek and I've got all day <laughs> I've got all day 
So uh, let's see what we can make happen. Oh, it's we did just get a ton of rain and it is very muddy, but I'm wearing my high sea boots. Use code Faith and Arrow for 15% off their entire website. Um, I love these boots. They are waterproof and they're very breathable and they're cute. Um, all right, so here's, my dad said that this is where he wants to make a trail down to the creek because there's a bit of a ridge right here and we suspect that that was done on purpose because I have, oh dear. I hope I caught that, it's too bright for me to tell. See what I mean? There's animals, okay? And animals scare me. Very cool. Gosh, I love being out in the country. Oh, that, that was exciting. I hope that I caught that. Um, anyway, we think that this ridge was put here intentionally. Um, look how hilly it is. Can you guys see? Look at that. Ah, oh, incredible. Gosh. Yeah, so um, we think that this is what they were trying to do was to get down to the creek because I've been down to the creek over that way and it's just a steep drop. Like I barely made it down and I am pretty like limber and like I move well and it was very difficult for me to get down there. So this is the best bet. There is a little bit of a drop right here. Let me get to the ledge here. Okay, so I'm standing on it little bit of a drop right here um but it's navigable navigatable navigatable um it's not too bad especially if i were to put in like t-post or something but i am holding my camera so i'm gonna put it down for a second because i don't want to drop my camera so it, this is pretty steep i know it's hard to tell on the camera but i'm going down sideways i do want to show you though there's a mini creek that runs right here but it's full of junk there's tires and broken glass, but that's cool that there's a little secondary creek right there. See what I mean? Lots of jars. This is actually a really nice jar. This is an atlas jar. Oh, and it has a plant living in it. It's a really nice jar. And it's actually in really good shape. Oh, I'll come back for it another time. It's not why I'm here. very overgrown. <gasps> ah! It got me. Oh, that hurt. Thorns, thorns, thorns! Oh. I think these are fresh. This is from that deer that ran. Came right through here. Guys, I'm serious, this is so spooky. Like I'm trying not to be spooked because this is awesome and I'm having a great time. But this is spooky. This is the very first time that I'm out here by myself. And it makes me realize that as a child, uh, oh, I was fearless. <laughs> I am not fearless anymore. Wow. Incredible. I love living in a state where I don't have to worry about snakes too much. That we do still have snakes in New York, but not anything like what we had in Kentucky. Guys, we're getting closer. It cleared out. This is what we just came through. 
That is my, the, my parents' barn. Look at how overgrown. But we made it out with only a couple scrapes and now we are in a clearing, but it's very muddy. So this would not be ideal for keeping animals or for building anything, but it is really beautiful. My goodness. We're very close to the creek. Thank goodness for my high seat boots. Keeping my feet dry. Wow, it's a lot of standing water. No, really, there's really no getting around the standing water. Very mucky. We made it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Wow, that was a really easy trek. That was not difficult at all. We made it, we made it. Look, you guys, we made it. Wow. I just heard something. Yeah, you're freaking me out. deep that is across the way. That's almost straight up and down. I know it's hard to tell on the camera, but I wouldn't be able to climb that without tools. That is straight vertical. I'm getting close to no longer being on my parents' property. The farther I go this way, the less likely I am on my parents' property. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm not hurting anything and there are no signs that I can see, so I'm gonna just come down a little ways. I can help me soak. It opens up right here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. That is just beautiful. How peaceful. There are a lot of snails. And I just bring that up to give you a little fun fact. I used to collect snails as a child. This one's empty. But I used to collect these as a child and I loved it. One of my absolute favorite childhood memories. Look at these deer prints. Uh, the sun's right on them. I'm definitely walking in a path that the deer often take. And why wouldn't they? It's clear. This is a clear path that I'm walking. I'm sure that they frequent it down here. I haven't seen any um, dog or canine tracks yet. Thank goodness for that. Wow, look at that. I'm gonna find a place to set up my camera so we can have a chat. All right, well, I was hoping to find an angle where the water was in the background, but I can't really find a good angle. And even as it is, my camera is resting on a tree, so a dead tree. So hopefully it doesn't fall because it's a quick tumble right into the water. The water's right next to us. So hopefully this will work. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of an update because I've been kind of MIA again and that stinks. And I wish that it wasn't that way. Um, but I've been real busy um, and I'm going to tell you some of the things I've been doing. I haven't um, announced a lot of things because honestly, I don't like to announce things unless they're really happening, like for sure happening because I, I don't want to be wishy-washy. I don't want to come to you guys and be like, we're doing this. 
and then it not happen, or this is happening and then it doesn't happen. I wanna be really straight up with you guys and always give you information um, as it's happening. And so because of that, sometimes I'm not communicating my current um, capacity or time availability or current anything with you. Um, and I don't like that, but I, I feel like that's better than being wishy-washy. Anyway, I'll tell you some of the things that I've got going on. I created a coloring book. It's my first Amazon KDP um, book. I have many other ideas. Um, and it is also the very first Faith and Arrow physical product that you can purchase to support my brand and, and my homestead. Um, I'm not going to link it. I'm going to create a second, a, a separate announcement video for that. I'm waiting for my author copy to come in the mail because I want to make sure that everything looks good and that there are no errors and everything translated properly before I direct you guys to it. It's a farm animals coloring and facts book and it has coloring pages for um, cows, pigs, goats, ducks, cats, dogs, um, a variety of animals and then there are other animals within the coloring pages but those animals have fact pages associated with them um, where it tells you um, age-appropriate facts about the animal so it's great supplementation for homeschooling um, it gives them an activity the coloring along with something that they can actually learn through the facts um, and I put a lot of work into it it was my very first um, time creating anything like that, a physical product, uh, the coloring book. It was so hard. <laughs> I did it through Canva hours and hours and hours. And I will tell you guys, which I, no, I, I won't get too far into it. I'll give you that, those details in, in its separate video, but I've been working on that. I'm also opening, opening a home bakery, um, here locally in my home and I'm going to be selling a variety of products, but I'm starting with sourdough bread, um, and then I'm going to be expanding to other products. They're not all gonna be sourdough products, um, but I that has taken up so much of my time. I've been recipe developing, I've been um, purchasing the equipment that I need, I applied for the permit to be able to do it out of my house, I've been sourcing my local ingredients, I found somebody to buy local flour from, I've been doing all of that, baking a lot of bread, um, designing the stickers, designing the packaging, um, just deciding where I wanna go with that. I've been feeling very led to start that um, company, uh, I guess, or initiative or whatever. Um, and it's not, I, you have to be local, I'm not shipping, anything like that. But if you're watching this and you're local to me, um, and you know, because I've had a few people reach out to me and be like, hey, I think we live near each other. So if you're watching this and you're one of those people and you want to purchase um, sourdough from me, sourdough bread, or if you want to be added to the Facebook group to see um, what else we've got available, let me know what town you're in. Mess message me on Instagram or email me at faithandarrowhomestead um, at gmail.com and we can talk about adding you to that. Um, but I'm still, in, I haven't started selling yet. I'm waiting for my permit to come through. And um, yeah, so that's been taking a lot of my time. Very soon, very soon, I'm going to start selling shirts. I'm not there with that yet, but I've been in the development stage of that. That's coming down the line. Um, and then other stuff too that I'm not ready to really share yet. But that's what I've had going on. And I've told you guys before, and I'm going to continue to tell you, I am very much in tune with what God wants me to be focusing my time on. I pray every morning when I wake up and ask him what we're doing. And, um, and I pray every week about YouTube and um, the videos that he wants me to make, the blog, the various aspects of my brand and business. And it's just not been happening for YouTube. I've not been feeling inspired. I've not had a lot of ideas. It comes and goes. And that's just the reality of it. And I'm not going to feel, I'm not gonna be a slave to the algorithm or to a set schedule or to a certain view count, a certain subscriber count. I'm just not. I want whatever God has for me and um, I'm obedient to that. So unfortunately that means I haven't had as many YouTube videos and I don't have a plan. Whatever God's plan is, is my plan. I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. Um, and that's just the reality of it. 
So um, I, those of you who watch every video that I put up and that support, regardless of my consistency, my frequency, what the content is, I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I thank you for sticking with me. And I just want you to know that my lack of uploading, I don't mean it to be disrespectful. I don't wanna take you for granted. I don't wanna take your time for granted. I don't want you to feel like you're investing your time and your energy into something that isn't going to um, be fruitful. I want nothing more than to be fruitful. That's exactly what I pray. Before I hit record, I ask that Jesus help me to abide in him so that I may be fruitful. That's exactly what I want to be. But um, it's this is tough. This whole thing is it's hard. There's a lot. And I only have so many hours in the day. I'm still working with my elderly guy. I'm, I'm babysitting now. Um, it's just a lot. And there's only so many hours in a day. And I only have so much energy. Um, and I'm not going to let myself feel pressured or rushed, like I said, for the sake of an algorithm or anything like that. So just stay tuned and uh, I'm excited to see what the future holds. But I just wanted to come out here and spend the day um, exploring and I wanted to kind of chat with you and let you know, you know, what's been going on over at Faith and Arrow Homestead and um, what I'm working on. I've got so much coming down the line, so much. There's other things too that we'll end up talking about by, before the end of the year that I'm worth working on. Um, it's exciting stuff. It's exciting stuff. And I'm so, I love watching God work in my life and in my marriage and in my business. And it's just amazing. It's amazing. So let me know down in the comments, how are you guys? Are you, are you somebody who regularly watches my videos? Um, and just drop your name, where you're from. And let's, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to connect with you. If you're on Instagram, follow me over there. I have many of you that chat with me regularly in my DMs and I love talking to you guys. I love hearing from you guys. And if you want more content, follow me on Instagram because I'm relatively active on my stories. Not every day, um, but I would say four to five days a week. I'm uploading on my stories, letting you guys know what I'm doing, what's going on. I'm posting food. I'm posting garden stuff. I'm posting animal stuff. Um, oh, that reminds me, there was one more thing that I wanted to talk, to share with you guys about, and that's the chickens. The chickens have been a very difficult thing for me. So I had that hen gear video, um, where I shared about the nesting box and it, it was helping, but I still couldn't get all of the chickens to use it. And they were laying randomly and they in random places and they were still eating them. So I took the hen gear nesting box out to see maybe they're just confused. Maybe if they go back to laying in the regular nesting boxes, all will be well. That wasn't the case. There were only one or two chickens laying and they were getting eaten right away. So I rehomed three of my chickens because one of them was getting very stressed out and was pulling her feathers out. So I thought, okay, this is a stress issue. Them eating their eggs, them not laying, this one's pulling its feathers out. This is a stress itch issue. So I thought maybe I have too many in too small of a space. I still to this day don't think so. I had 12 chickens in, an, in my original coop and run and I extended, Tom and my dad um, and myself extended the run an additional, I don't even remember now, seven feet maybe. So they had the coop, the original run and the extended run, and I let them free range sometimes. I have a hard time believing, because that the, just the original coop and run was um, good for 12 to 15 hens, it said. So having 12 with the extended space shouldn't have been an issue. My chickens are dramatic, I guess. Be, I rehomed three of them, and the guy that I rehomed them to, they couldn't have gone to a better place. Um, I loved his setup. I loved his setup. And he had um, like a coop, he had like a chicken compound. He had multiple different coops um, that made like a, like a U kind of, and they were not attached, but they were next to each other. And he had a bunch of hens and they lived, they had their own little homes and they weren't all in the same coop, unlike mine. And that meant they had multiple different places to lay eggs. That's why he wasn't worried about potentially taking egg eaters because of course I told him. And he was like, I'm not worried because my chickens lay eggs in so many different places 
I don't foresee these guys, even if they ate their own eggs, that's fine. Um, so he was very gracious about it. He took them on. He has since sent me pictures. They're doing great. As soon as I went from 12 to nine, they, mine started laying, like almost all of them. And um, they are still eating them, but not quick enough. And I'm still able to get out there and get eggs. Um, and I put a, the camera back in there and I know who's doing it. I'm not gonna get rid of them quite yet. I'm going to um, get take inspiration from this guy. I bought garden steaks, which are being delivered today, big, tall, seven foot wooden ones. And I bought um, netting and I'm going to um, make an outside of the coop and run separate run area. I'm going to try giving them all access to it. And if I increase their um, living space and give them more room to explore, and I'm gonna put the hen gear nesting box out in this new run area. So now there's multiple places that they can go to lay eggs. They're away from each other. They've got their own space. Um, and I'm hoping that that will be enough to get them to stop. If it's not, I know now who is eating the eggs. So in the morning, I can just go out and put those two troublemakers um, in the extended run area and keep them separated from the others. They've got the hen gear nesting box that they can go lay in. They'll roll away. They won't eat those eggs. Um, they've got food and water space, everything that they need, and I'll just let them in at night. Um, so that's my second plan if the first plan doesn't work. I'm trying to figure this out. Um, before we move on, I just wanna say that I love my hen gear nesting box. I'm so glad that I have it. In the future, when Tom and I buy property and we move, I'm going to get a new flock of chickens. I'm going to keep these girls that I have currently separate and I'm going to just age them out and let them do their own thing. But I'm going to have a serious egg laying flock um, that are going to be trained to the hen gear nesting boxes at, from the beginning as chicks. They're gonna know that that's where they go to lay eggs and that's how I'm going to operate in the future. I do wanna be able to sell eggs. I wanna be able to gift them to friends and family members. Um, and the way that I, this is just a mess, the way that I've had it, it hasn't worked. Multiple lessons learned, but for hen gear, if you are, if you just got chicks this spring, please may I um, encourage you to go ahead and get a hen gear nesting box, get them trained to it from the start, and you'll never have any of these issues. You'll have clean, unbroken eggs that you can share and sell. You won't have to wash them because they will be in the clean um, roll away nest, uh, the catch area. And it's just, it's the move, you guys. Also, it's great timing. Um, I promise I'm not doing this necessarily um, promotionally. It just so happens that I just rehomed those chickens last week. Like this is, this is fresh for me. But it just so happens that Hen Gear is having a spring 10% sale off all of their nesting boxes. That promotion is applied at checkout. There's no code for that, but it's stackable with my code, Faith and Arrow. Um, and it's the and at the and sign, not the word, Faith and Arrow. Um, and you can stack an additional $15 off your entire order with that code. So the month of April is the time to do it if you're going to get the nesting box. Um, and like I said, you can save yourself a whole lot of heartache and headache by just starting with that. If you're just getting into chickens this year, please get them and train them to it from the start. Anyway, that's all I got. Those are my updates. That's what's been going on on the homestead a lot. <laughs> and I'm so excited. I was just talking to my mom before she left. And I was like, mom, we've got so much coming down the line. It's just a matter of being patient. And it's a matter of trusting God listening to him and just trusting the path and sticking to it. And that's what I'm trying to do. Tom has said, he's like, you've got too much going on and because of it, you're not able to do any of it fully. And he's right. I'm not able to do YouTube fully. I'm not able to do um, my blog fully. I'm not able to do the bakery fully. I'm not able to do the KDP fully. He's right, he's right, he's right. But this is what I'm being called to. This is what I'm being called to. And so I'm going to do it. I'm gonna be obedient and this is where we're at. So thank you guys for sticking, uh, sticking it out with me through all of this craziness. I can't wait to see where this goes and I so, I'm so grateful that you're here. I can't wait to see you in my next video, whenever that may be. And have faith and keep moving forward.
Bye, friends. I am shaking. <laughs> the scariest thing just happened. I got lost. It's... I have a very poor sense of direction um, and this is all very overgrown like above my head so I could not figure out like what path through the brush I took to get back to where we went down together um, and I came up the wrong way but I could see my ledge I was just to the west of it um, I just traversed this tree this downed tree I am terrified of heights i i don't like roller coasters i don't like i i don't like stuff like that i'm very scared of heights there's like very little to hang on to and i sideways holding my snips and my camera not on just holding it traversed this and it i you won't be able to tell from the cam I literally i'm shaking as i'm holding my camera you won't be able to tell but it's like five six feet off the ground it's not like i, I wouldn't have died but it would have hurt and I would have fell into thorns and brush and stuff. And I was praying out loud the whole time that I was walking across that tree. I was like, please, God, let me make it, please. Ooh, well, I'm getting the adventure I wanted. But anyway, my ledge is right over here, so I'm close. So here's my ridge and my ledge is like right there behind this tree. But I went this way. There's my tree right there that I crossed. So yeah, I, I came through like right here. I needed to come through like right here. So we made it, but there, look at how, hopefully that shows you like how vertical that is. And we came up this way. Ooh, ooh. Okay, that's enough adventuring for one day.